I've been thinking about how crazy this season is. That seems to be the main thing we all keep saying to each other. I know we're all doing some things that are normal. We're going to some familiar places. But a large piece of our life as Christians has been taken. And the way we experience faith in community, for some of us, that's just gone. It's just what I've been thinking about lately. And I know we're all trying to deal with this reality, this loss. It's taking a toll. This situation is unprecedented, extraordinary even. From the time of Adam and Eve, this isn't normal. In the history of our country, from world wars to the Spanish flu, total shutdowns like this have rarely occurred. With all the advances and technology we have, we still find ourselves caught in this pandemic. So how is the church really supposed to respond? Specifically, how could our church be responding? We're the light of the world, a city on a hill, we're the salt that makes all things taste better. Some would say that we should obey the words in Hebrews 10.25, not giving up meeting together. I mean, the, the church is God's plan for the redemption of the world. The church will regather in large numbers again. The gathering of God's people is where evangelism happens all throughout the New Testament. But our mission isn't to gather. Our mission from Jesus is connecting people to Him. Staying on mission is harder than we actually think. And I would never ask for this scenario, but this is actually a great opportunity for like a gut check moment. I mean, can we adapt and throw off anything that gets in the way from our main focus? Have we I'm just asking the questions. Have we unintentionally underestimated the ability that the enemy has to secretly replace our mission with something else? Have we, have we looked really hard at exactly what Jesus told us to do and made that our priority or, or has some missional drift happened in all of our hearts? See, the enemy doesn't offer us distractions that are clearly not going to work for us. Man, he's sneaky. He's a con artist. He's a master at deception. He's described as an angel of light. I mean, don't don't shrug that off too quickly. Is it remotely possible that my aim, the mission that I'm trying to live out, has some portion that serves me more than what Jesus actually called me to? We miss this place. We miss our experience that we enjoy together. And these doors, they will open again. We will gather, we will sing. We're all gonna look back on this one part of our life and have to evaluate, what do we do with it? Did we love working from home? Did we get a project done? Did we just catch up on Netflix? Or, Were we on task? Were we obeying the words of Jesus? Go into all the world and protect your freedoms and rights. I mean, that's that's not what he said. I mean, that's not bad. It's actually good to fight for justice, to speak truth, to exercise a voice of reason. And there's a season for everything under the sun. All those things are good things, but are they the best one single aim of all our efforts. Go into all the world and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Connecting people to Jesus, that's the main mission. Can that happen now? Are we really being stopped from working on the main mission? John 3.30 says, He must increase, but I must decrease. This is 
of the most important attitude we can possibly have, especially during this pandemic. If we decrease during this season, there will be room for Jesus to increase. There are believers that don't understand our faith. Jude one twenty two says, be merciful to those who doubt. And my flesh at times and the echoes I hear from fellow Christians is more indignation towards those who doubt or don't believe in Jesus. And this is exactly the attitude the enemy wants us to have because it gets us off mission. It's hard to reach people you are angry or frustrated at. The Bible is telling us to have mercy on them. And the gospel is just invasive right now. The gospel is gaining ground right now. Are you circling your family up, your friends up, loved ones to make sure that they know Jesus, that they're connected to Jesus? If we're spending more time researching what our rights are or complaining about what politicians are doing or fretting about tomorrow, if we're doing those things more than we're connecting people to Jesus, that's a warning sign. This is our time as a church to love our community more than ever before. This is our time to be merciful to those who doubt. This is our time to decrease so that Jesus will increase. I'm excited about the time that is coming when we will gather again in a church building. Let's steward the season we have in front of us right now with all we have because ultimately this is our time to connect people to Jesus.